to my show, Searching for Integrity. My name really is John Smith, and I'm searching for people with integrity. Why? Because our country suffers from IDD, Integrity Deficit Disorder. Today I'm bringing to you some information with regards to the crypto world. And of course, the major part of that is the Bitcoin. Uh, I have done some research in this area and it's had quite an up and down over the years. Um, and we're seeing a bit of a down now and um, we'll get to that. I hope that uh, we'll be able to uh, um, discuss it, certainly, so that you can understand it and, and make some decisions from it. Uh, and hopefully they're good decisions. Uh, first I'd like to present would be uh, a, an article. Um, Bitcoin, what to know before investing. This is an article that came in uh, over a year ago. Uh, I'll just begin now. It's uh, interesting information and can follow it up by even more infer interesting information. Uh, the Bitcoin is not a traditional asset and its fundamental values are not measured in traditional terms. Bitcoin can be traded directly between two parties or and independent exchanges. More brokerages are facilitating trades for investors in recent years. Bitcoin is a highly volatile, almost completely speculative investment. Wild price swings are commonplace. For instance, in the first weekend of 2021, Bitcoin rose 20%. The next Sunday, it fell 20%. Bitcoin is a digital currency that operates outside the control of governments and banks, trading it fast and cheap. Its volatile price found by looking at BTCUSD has made it a favorite of high stakes, risk-seeking investors eager for the potential of a big payoff. And you can see this is, uh, to a lot of people, this is uh, information that they didn't know before, and now they're going to know. Uh, what is Bitcoin? Defining Bitcoin can be tricky. To some, it is a commodity. To others, it's digital cash. However, the most concrete definition of Bitcoin is this. It is software, a program designed to allow people to exchange Val, you directly with each other. It was created by someone who called himself Satoshi Nakamoto, unveiled in 2008 and launched the following year. What makes Bitcoin unique is that this piece of software is run across a network of linked but independent computers. In this way, no one party has control over the network. No central bank and no government can dictate the gut currency's value. Every single Bitcoin transaction is recorded in a ledger that is visible to anybody known as the blockchain. Bitcoin's technology is trusted due to its ability to prevent counterfeits and hacking. The currency database and its pierced once since it's live in January 2009. Because Bitcoin is nothing more than digits in a computer program, it has absolutely no intrinsic value. What determines the price is only what one another person is willing to pay for. Is Bitcoin a good investment? Bitcoin is also almost entirely a speculative investment. There are a number of considerations you should weigh when deciding whether to invest. Chief among them is what you, your financial goals are. The most important thing to keep in mind is that Bitcoin's extremely short history and for all that it has traded inside a very small 
market. Since its launch in 2009, its adherents have promoted it as an inflation hedge like a new version of gold, but it has no history of operating as such, and it isn't clear it would be effective as such were it to operate as a larger asset class, such as gold. What Bitcoin does have in abundance is volatility. For a certain kind of investor, that is very enticing. Based solely on its price history, Bitcoin has been a winning investment. In January 2009, it had no value. Twelve years later, in February 2021, it surpassed 50000 for the first time. However, it can move violently, and unlike traditional markets, there are no circuit breakers or closing bells to stop trading. It was up 350% in 2020, but fell 64% in February and March. While the drop was driven by economic collapse due to the coronavirus pandemic, the sell-off was twice the size of the plunge in stocks. It can and has pivoted wildly within a day. Why isn't investing in Bitcoins like investing in currency? Nakamoto designed it to be a form of money, but he disappeared in 2010 and hasn't been heard from since. The prices of traditional currencies are the result of an open market and the desires of the government that issues those currencies. Bitcoin's value, on the other hand, is solely the result of what investors are willing to pay. It's a sentiment-driven market, and there is no limit to how high or how low it can go. What to know before investing in Bitcoin? Let's talk about that. There are a number of well-regulated, credible exchanges, like Coinbase Base in the U.S., Bitflyer in Japan, and Kraken in Europe where investors can buy Bitcoin. Signing up for an account is straightforward, though you will be required to provide proof of identity. More Main Street services are allowing Bitcoin trading as well. Square Inc.'s Cash App, Robinhood, PayPal, all now allow users to buy or sell Bitcoin directly inside their accounts. If you want to maintain some level of anonymity, an attractive, if controversial, feature of Bitcoin is that there are also unregulated exchanges. Moreover, you can download Bitcoin's operating software directly, or you can download free and for sale software and hardware for a digital wallet and store Bitcoins directly. But be warned, these require a certain level of technical skill. You could you could then go to the platform like Local Bitcoins that connects buyers directly. Now, that's the introduction, a brief education of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. That was the only one mentioned. The other one that it was mentioned in the article was Ethereum which is the same technology as Bitcoin, but configured for different purpose. Ethereum was designed to be a more flexible version of Bitcoin that could allow different types of services to be built on top of it. Despite its ambitions, Ethereum is yet to produce a version that is widely acceptable to non-programmers. Now, this article by Paul Binga from the uh, uh, Wall Street Journal, um, I'm a big fan, use a lot of their material, and they appreciate me spreading their material. The next item is also about crypto. It's by the same author that wrote this over a year ago, year and a half, Paul Vinga. It's called Leverage in the Time of Crypto. I'll begin. Last night, crypto leader Lender, rather, Lender, Celsius Network, filed for bankruptcy protection, the latest in a string of high-profile meltdowns. Sure, the slide is in crypto prices hurt firms 
such as Celsius, Voyager Digital, and Three Arrows Capital, but it was their leveraged best. bets. I, for example, borrowed money on the market. They were the real problem. And the leverage in crypto is still high-end enough that it could be the tender for another downswing to the sell-off. Decentralized finance platforms have $80 billion of crypto invested in them, according to the data site Defi Lama, a decline of 71% from the November peak of $280 billion. Most of what is leveraged in Jeff Dorman, the Chief Investment Officer at Crypto Asset Manager Arca. Another way to look at leverage is to measure the amount of open interest in the futures markets where people buy contracts that allow them to speculate on the price of crypto assets. Currently, there is about $16.3 in Bitcoin futures, futures and options markets combined down 63% from $43.6 billion at their peaks, according to the data firm CoinGlass. But those numbers are down because they reflect prices quoted in U.S. dollars. The underlying asset for these contracts is Bitcoin. In Bitcoin terms, an open interest is up about 20%. There were 830,000 Bitcoins of open interest in those two markets, compared to 696,000 bitcoins when prices peaked. That's an increase in leverage. This isn't a complete accounting of crypto leverage, but it's enough to know that you're whistling past the graveyard if you're convinced this is all over. I was talking to Celsius founder Alex Mashinsky in 2021 and his business and the market. Mr. Mashinsky boasted about how well Celsius handled the pandemic-driven crash in 2020. Celsius itself, not necessarily its customers, had no liquidations in the crash, he said, meaning none of its leveraged positions were closed due to losses. Everything worked exactly as designed, he said. But I asked, what about a worse sell-off? There must be some number at which the lending market breaks down. He thought about it for a moment. 80%, he said. If the market were to fall 80%, we liquidate just like everybody else. In retrospect, he didn't even take that much. When Celsius announced it was hating, halting withdrawals, Bitcoin was down about 60% from its high. And this is recent. We don't know how many firms are sitting on leveraged positions, but we know they are out there. Mr. Mashinsky didn't reply to a request for comment on our conversation from last year. The takeaway, there is still a considerable amount of leverage being used in the crypto markets, which means another leg of the sell-off is definitely still a possibility. Interesting that uh, the article, uh, educational, both, uh, is done by the same author. It's uh, interesting also the events that are now occurring. We now pick up the newspaper, understand, that, read, the, read the news about uh, crypto's domino effect is widening and threatening more pain. That was the head of an author of an article. Losses are blowing holes in balance sheets and pushing firms in the industry to near bankruptcy. Turmoil in the digital assets ecosystem has grown in recent weeks with losses in cryptocurrencies blowing holes in balance sheets and pushing firms near bankruptcy. After a pair of cryptocurrencies crashed, wiping out billions of dollars in value in May, a British Virgin Islands court this past weekend ordered 
a hedge fund that had survived several crypto downturns to liquidate. Another platform that counts the hedge fund as an investor capped withdrawals while evaluating how the hedge fund's woes would affect its liquidity. A handful of crypto players have established financial ties throughout the market and added to risk by borrowing and lending digital assets among themselves, with at least one lender, Celsius Network, drawing on collateral to do its own borrowing. Everything is deeply, deeply intertwined. We didn't have this in 2018. <clears throat> London-based asset management firm CoinShares, referring to a past crypto market downturn. While new crypto, such problems are well known in the traditional financial realm. During the 2008-7 global financial crisis, bank lending practices included rehypothecation of assets using collateral to borrow more money left banks short on liquidity. In the aftermath, regulators tightened oversight. Digital asset prices had been falling dramatically along with other speculative bets in response to the Federal Reserve's move to raise interest rates. Crypto's headache intensified in May when the stablecoin TerraUSD broke from its dollar peg and dragged the value of its sister crypto surgery, crypto currency Luna, down with it, eradicating $40 billion. Investors got a taste of how the comingly of crypto investments would hit the market when a fire sale of assets backed the TerraUSD tail stablecoin, pushed the price of Bitcoin almost $10,000 lower to trade around $30,000. Problems facing Three Arrows Capital Limited, the hedge fund ordered to liquidate after being heavily invested in Luna, spilled over to the crypto brokerage Voyager Digital Limited this past week. On Friday, Voyager said it was temporarily suspending trading to deposits, withdrawals, and loyalty rewards. It earlier issued a notice of default to three arrows for allegedly failing to make a loan repayment of 15,250 Bitcoin and 350 million in USD coin, a stable coin. The loan was about 646 million based on Bitcoin's current price of around 19,400. Shares of Voyager which are traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange are down more than 96% this year. On Friday, Three Arrows liquidators asked a New York bankruptcy court to recognize the British Virgin Islands case and to allow them to handle any assets in the U.S. Three Arrows financial troubles have affected the smaller firms in its orbit. The Hong Kong-based trading firm Eight Blocks Capital said Three Arrows has cut off communications after allegedly misappropriating one million of its capital. Kyber Network, a decentralized finance project, and the firm has a small portion of its treasury with the hedge fund, which it said hasn't responded to any of its attempts to communicate. Three Arrows didn't respond to a request for comment. Crypto still exists largely outside of regulation, with few federal laws specific to crypto and the Securities Exchange Commissions taking up cases against individual firms on an ad hoc basis. The growth of the industry worth more than three trillion, trillion at its peak last year has surpassed the ability of regulators to keep up according to analysts. The blow-up of TerraUSD prompted renewed calls for Congress to pass legislation governing crypto. Without a central bank to swallow illiquid assets and curtail contagion, crypto has taken a page from the traditional financial playbook. 
Crypto Exchange, FTX, headed by Sam Bankman Fried, has struck a deal with the crypto lender BlockFi Inc., including a 400 million credit facility and the option for FTX to buy the company for as much as 240 million. BlockFi chief executive said by Twitter on Friday that market events relate to Celsius and three arrows and a negative impact on the company. BlockFi has said it experienced about 80 million in losses from its loan exposure to the hedge fund. Uh, this example is when it's up, it's great. When it's down, it's not. And when it's down, it spreads faster. In June, Mr. Bankman's other crypto company, the trading firm Alameda Research, Research extended two credit lines, one worth 200 million and another for 15,000 bitcoins to Voyager. Alameda acquired a 30, 35 million stake in Voyager in May. The travails of the crypto market call to mind the actions of a pair of financiers during prior times of turmoil. JP Morgan twice stepped in to prevent economic classes before the Federal Reserve System was created in 1913. More recently in 2008, Warren Buffett helped to revive Goldman Sachs Group, Inc. and General Electric Company. The crypto market's problems could be the tip of the iceberg. Three Arrows, a big borrower in the system, has seen its levered positions liquidated by exchanges, including BitMEX and Deribit, after failing to meet margin calls. Margin calls, which are demands from lenders for more collateral from borrowers back to their loans, have swept across the crypto trading industry as the value of major cryptocurrencies fell in the midst of a broad market sell-off. <clears throat> this has been just this past week. The crypto investor Mike Novogratz, who bet heavily on Luna before its spiral, drew parallels between the current leverage-fueled carnage in crypto and the 1998 blow-up of long-term capital management, a heavily levered hedge fund whose collapse sparked concern of contagion in the financial system. The ascent of leverage in crypto has been growing for years, bursting with the downfall of TerraUSD and Pseudo Crypto Bank tried to do it that offered holders of the stable coin nearly 20% for putting their deposits in Chief Executive of Custodia Bank, which aims to provide custody and other digital asset banking services for institutional investors. Crypto firms began taking on more leverage after the approval of Gray Scale Bitcoin Trust in 2013. The trust for years was one of the few Bitcoin investments that average investors could access, access in brokerage or retirement accounts. Because of that, its value often traded many times higher than a spot Bitcoin letting investors profit from the difference. Three Arrows held 6.1% of the trust shares at the end of 2020, according to a filing with the SEC. That trade was so successful that investors viewed it as risk-free. When it became less profitable as more products became available, investors began trading in Bitcoin futures markets, speculating that the price would go higher yet. And then that dried up, they turned to yield generating platforms. All this leverage flocked from the sure thing to the less sure thing, was said by Ms. Long, the author of this article. With each one of these big trends, it got riskier for traders to play them. Crypto investors are bracing for more pain. Celsius froze client accounts in June, and the crypto lender battled finance, and the futures exchange CoinFlex halted customer withdrawals. Babel Finance said it has reached preliminary agreements on the repayment period of some debts, 
but it hasn't resumed withdrawals. CoinFlex is issuing $47 million of another token in the hope of res resuming customer withdrawals after a major customer went into negative, negative equity. Faced with uncertainty, some crypto lenders have begun calling, recalling loans to large bar borrowers to check for their financial health, while others have tightened across access to their loan products. There's a shortage of supply as companies like Celsius have now turned off withdrawals and have a smaller amount of assets to lend out. Crypto lender. Many markets makers who used to borrow from platforms like that are now looking at alternatives. For now, executives in the industry are hoping the current crisis is a repeat of the crypto winter in 2018, during which the bad actors who orchestrated the boom and bust of initial coin offerings were flushed out, making the system stronger as a result. Just like we, the industry, flushed out the all ICO froth in the previous bull market, in this one, it's all the leverage being flushed out. Caitlin Ostroff of the Wall Street Journal put together a very informative uh, article in Markets and Finance. Uh, and it follows up the other two that I think that people are saying, whoa, maybe this Bitcoin thing isn't so good for us or me. I think you should do some more. And if, if again, if you can wait on regulation, a regulated Bitcoin of some kind where there is a regulation so that you can't get wiped out like these people have in these companies that were buying and selling and so forth and lending. I have one more item. Crypto's tumultuous second quarter leaves investors asking, what else could go wrong? Crypto market lost more than half its value. We're waking up with a massive headache. By Paul Vinga again. Crypto's rocket ship to the moon crashed, landed back on Earth in the second quarter. In almost every way, the second quarter was the polar opposite of the gilded, nearly two-year rally. That preceded it. Two related cryptocurrencies, Terra USD and Luna, plunged in early May and the effects quickly rippled. Prices for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies tumbled. Lenders told customers they couldn't take their money out. We've been partying hard for a long time, the founder and chief executive of research and money management from Quantum Economics. Now we're waking up with a massive headache. Across 2020 and 2021, the crypto sector's market value catapulted from 200 billion from a peak of 3 trillion last November. According to corn market cap, prices tumbled at the end of 2021 flatlined in the first quarter of 2022, then fell again. In the second quarter, crypto's market value dropped 56% from 2.04 trillion into about 890 billion. Big losses are nothing new for cryptocurrencies, but in prior crashes, the market was much smaller and comprised mainly risk tolerant technophiles libertarians, and niche players. In the past couple of years, the crypto market has borrowed in the mainstream with Super Bowl ads and Saturday night live parodies, attracting both Wall Street traders and individual investors. An ecosystem of exchanges, brokerages, and lenders has sprung up around it. Chaos underscores what a risky investment crypto can be, and some regulators and lawmakers are calling for stricter rules. The current maelstrom started in early May with the collapse of blockchain-based platform called Terra, 
whose main feature was a stable coin called Terra USD and sister token called Luna. Stable coins are designed to maintain a peg to national currencies and they drew many people who thought they were a safe bet. Many put their Terra USD coins in a sort of crypto bank called Anchor Protocol, which offered an eye popping 19.5% interest rate on deposits. That high rate attracted investors who put in a combined 60 billion on Terra. But critics, even some investors, warned it wasn't sustainable. Over the course of a few days in May, the stablecoin lost its peg, and both currencies quickly plunged to nearly zero. All the assets on the platform became virtually worthless. The credit crunch ensnared a number of other firms. One large lender, Celsius Network, told customers in June it was freezing accounts, preventing people from taking their money out. Several other lenders followed suit. The big U.S. exchange, Coinbase Global, abruptly cut 18% of its staff, even rescinding employment offers it had made to people who hadn't yet started. Other exchanges, such as Gemini Trust, Crypto.com, have also laid off staffers as well as lenders like Block5. A hedge fund, Three Arrows Capital, suffered hairy losses heavy losses in Terra's collapse and in other crypto investments, and this week a court ordered it to liquidate. The broker Voyeur Digital, which had lent money to Three Arrows, had to borrow from the crypto exchange FTX limited customer withdrawals to $2,000. It's going to be a hard period for people to get through said Adam Reeds, co-founder and chief executive of crypto lender Ledin. There will be some effect on morale. Venture money is tightening as well. In the second quarter, there were 511 deals in the crypto blockchain industry that raised about $7.9 billion, according to data from PitchBook. In the first quarter, there were 686 deals that raised about $10 billion. On January, June 18, a Saturday Bitcoin traded as low as $17,600 after a brutal week for stocks. The Federal Reserve had lifted rates by 0.75% that week, the biggest increase since 1994, raising concerns that the U.S. could tip into recession. On Wednesday, Bitcoin traded around 20,000, 200, 200 down some 70% from its record of nearly 68,000 in November. Many people in crypto expect a long slog back. There will be continued consolidation among the surviving companies and projects and focus on more conservative, grounded products that are already profitable, said Sidney Powell, the co-founder of crypto lending firm Maple Finance. In this environment, it's definitely leaner, he said. Well, again, it's it's exciting, but it's frightening. It's up and it's down, and it's down and it's up. Uh, all these unravelings and these companies, these unregulated companies, is pretty scary. Uh, for me, it is too. And uh, I'm trusting that all of you were educated to an extent today, or at least made aware of, this is not so good. This is not something you should probably do. You should stand back and see what actually comes next. And that would be what I would be and what I would do. I'd like to thank you for tuning in today to my listeners. Thank you for listeners and for tuning and for searching for integrity. So long and happy trails to all. John Smith. Adios.